by Joey Joanne Season 2. I'm your host, Joanne Chan, and every Wednesday we bring you inspiring stories, powerful messages, and fun conversations with me and my special guests and friends, and it's my personal mission to empower you to live and lead a life with joy. This podcast is for you if you're looking for more joy, courage, passion, and purpose in your life. Now let's dive into today's episode and get ready to laugh, learn, and live your life to the fullest. Hello and welcome back to another episode. This week is very special for me as I just celebrated my birthday in the beautiful city of Busan, South Korea with my mom. And you know, as I reflect on another year of life, I just want to take this opportunity, this moment to give myself a gift, a gift that I also want to share with all of you. So I sat down one night and I asked myself, what are the lessons I have learned in life that I wish I would have learned them earlier. So this episode, the 10 lessons you need to learn before it's too late is born. And I truly believe they can make a significant difference in your life because they are so profound. And one more thing before we dive in, since it's my birthday week, I would love to hear from all of you. And I want to know in what way me or this podcast has helped you, has inspired you or empowered you to become a better present. You can let me know by sending me a DM on Instagram at joanne.chan or if you feel inspired, create an IG story and you can tag me at joanne.chan. Your stories mean the world to me and it keeps me motivated to create content like this for you. So let's get started on this 10 invaluable lessons about love, self-love, success, mindset, and motivation, and so much more that can help you show up in life a little more fully and a lot more joyfully. So grab your favorite drink, settle in, or grab your favorite sneaker and go for a walk and let's dive right in. Lesson number one, love isn't about finding the right person but becoming the right person. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is believing that love is about finding the right person. You know, we often get caught out in the notion that if we just search hard enough, we'll discover we'll find that perfect match. But in reality, is that love is not about finding the right person, it's about becoming the right person, the highest version of yourself the best version of who you can be in this lifetime. So instead of looking outward for someone to fill a void in your life, focus on your own growth and self-improvement because when you radiate your truth, your power, your authenticity, your joy, your passion, your confidence, that is when the right people, the ones that you dream about attracting, will naturally gravitate toward you. So let me share a bit of my personal journey that I have not shared before and this past year has been a period of profound growth and healing for me especially when it comes to relationship because I ended a relationship that lasted for way too long it was way past its prime time and letting go was one of the hardest things I have ever had to do but I realized that by holding on to it I was holding myself back from becoming the person I truly wanted to be and the partner that I truly deserve. However, by making the difficult decision to end that relationship, I created space for what is truly meant for me. It's just like clearing out your closet. You know, you may have to remove the old to make way for something fresh, something new and exciting. Because a few months after that, I met someone. When we first met, it felt like a soulmate connection. And it was everything I've ever asked the universe for. You know, he's into personal growth. He's very self-aware. He's into spirituality. You know, he meditates, he journals and do all that stuff. He listens to podcasts. It was a connection that I yearn for. But it didn't work out in the end. But it was a confirmation and reassurance that I'm able to attract someone who mirrors my growth. Because when you start to see your own worth and value, when you commit to working on yourself, and healing yourself, you begin to attract people who mirror that growth. This is manifestation. This is law of attraction. Like attracts like. When you focus on becoming the best version of yourself, you will draw in those who are on the same journey. So I encourage you to reflect on your own path. 
Are you searching for love externally and neglecting your own inner growth? Because remember, love starts from within. You can't love someone if you don't love yourself. So this is an invitation for you to embrace the work of becoming the highest version of yourself, of becoming the right person. Because when you do, you will find that the right people, your dream partner, will be drawn to you, ready to share in this beautiful life you are creating. But until then, you know you will be fine, you will be happy, you will be joyful, you will value yourself, you will be doing things that make you happy, you can eat alone, you can watch movies alone, you can travel alone, work on your dreams, pursue a passion, because at the end of the day, it's you that will never leave you. So don't go looking for the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Become the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Lesson number two. 90% of life is just showing up. That's it. If you show up, there's a chance that something might happen. And in order for things to happen, you must show up. You must leave your comfort zone and try new things, go to new places, meet new people. And you will never know what opportunities you are missing out on until you just go out and do it. I want you to imagine this, alright? You are standing at the edge of a beautiful sprawling park. On one side, you see a group of people having fun, laughing and connecting. They are playing games, they are playing sports, trying new activities and enjoying life. On the other side, you see a bench where people sit and scrolling through their phones, watching the world pass them by. Now, what if you were to visualize your life? When you choose to stay on that bench, You are missing out on the vibrant experiences happening around you. You are missing out on life. You are watching others create memories, make connections and discover new passions. But when you decide to step off the bench and join the fun, you are already halfway there to success because you made the choice to show up. Most people live in fear. They get stuck in the victim mentality, making excuses for why they can't try new things. I'm too busy. I'm, I'm not good enough. What if I fail? But if you are listening to this podcast, I know you are not like most people. So what if you succeed? You have chosen to show up today and that is a significant step in itself. So I just want to, you know, pause me here and give yourself a pack on the back for showing up today. And let me share a personal story. You know, so I remember when I was hesitant to start podcasting back in 2021. I thought, what if no one listens? What if I mess up? But I decided to take the leap of faith to record my first episode and share my voice for the very first time on a public platform. And that first step led to this incredible journey filled with world-class guests life-changing conversations and a community that inspires me every day and if I didn't show up I wouldn't be here sharing these lessons with you today so think about it think of your life where you don't show up where you let fear and excuses hold you back it's a life filled with missed opportunities and regrets and self-doubts and all the what ifs now Contrast that with a life where you do show up, where you embrace challenges, when you try new things and seize opportunities and believe in yourself. That life is vibrant, is full of growth, full of joy and filled with experiences that ultimately shape who you are and who you are going to become. So the next time when you feel the hesitation or fear creeping in, I want you to remember this lesson that showing up is the first step to living your life fully and becoming the best version of you. Lesson number three. You are going to upset a lot of people when you start doing what is best for you. You are going to lose a lot of friends when you get really serious about your life goals. Loneliness is a price you pay when you start to improve yourself. You know, when I quit my job and dive headfirst into entrepreneurship, I remember talking to my buddy at the time, who was already an entrepreneur. He, w- he runs a marketing agency and he said to me, just so you know, you're going to sacrifice a lot. You know, you won't have time to hang out with friends, go out on Saturday nights, no dates and no parties. At the time, I was like, yeah, yeah, I get it. But his words stuck with me forever. 
And you know what? He was right. The past four years have been the loneliest that I've ever experienced. Well, I'm someone who likes to spend time alone, so it wasn't really an issue. But it's just so different when you're building your business alone and no one understands what you're trying to do or accomplish or what you're going through or what you're struggling with. So for the first two and a half years, it was just me and my laptop grinding away. And I often felt isolated, you know, and it definitely took a toll on my mental health. And I didn't lose friends because I, not because I didn't want to hang out, but it was more that I was focused on my goals and working on myself and my business, while a lot of my friends were still complaining about their jobs and didn't want to change, right? And I even have this friend, he's an old friend of mine, he saw my stories and he commented, Joanne stopped hanging out with us because she only hangs out with successful people now. So I realized I didn't want to spend time with people who had a poor mindset. I stopped hanging out with you not because you are not successful, but because you have a poor mindset. Because you know, your time and energy are precious when you're trying to build a business and that just kind of, you know, created a natural divide. So what I'm trying to say is, look, pursuing your dreams often means making sacrifices. It's true. That means skipping out on Saturday night to work on something you're passionate about. And if you can't do that, if you can't make a sacrifice, then this path really is not for you. And here's another thing. It's totally okay to prioritize your dream. And it's totally okay to say no to your friends and family, even if that means disappointing a few people. You need to know true friends will understand and support your journey, while others might drift away. So embrace the shift. It's a natural part of leveling up. And when you reach the next level, you will meet next level people. So if you are feeling lonely, like you are on this journey by yourself, trust me, you are not alone. I've been there, done that. So use that solitude to your advantage. Because it's a sign that you are committed to your growth and your goals in life. And keep going. Just keep going, my friend. Because it's so, so worth it. Lesson number four. Self-love is about knowing how to transform your flaws into your strengths rather than hiding them inside so no one can see them. For a long time, I thought being emotional was one of my biggest flaws, one of my biggest weaknesses. And I used to push my feelings down thinking that I was weak for being so sensitive and emotional. I would run away from my emotions instead of facing them not really knowing how to process what I was feeling. And I thought if I could just bury those feelings deep enough, no one would see them and I wouldn't feel them. But that didn't help me at all. And it wasn't until I started interviewing some amazing guests on this podcast that I learned how to embrace my emotions and how to process my emotions most importantly instead of hiding from them. They taught me that my feelings are not weaknesses, they are actually my superpower. Now I see my emotions as powerful guiding lights, showing me what I need to learn about myself. For example, if I feel overwhelmed or anxious, instead of running from those feelings, I lean into them and ask myself, what is behind the emotions? Is it fear of failure? Is it a need for more trust and self-compassion? When I feel something deeply, I take a moment to reflect and ask, what is this trying to teach me? Why am I feeling this way? Where does it come from? And I want you to think of it like this. I want you to think of yourself as the gardener who discovers that some of your plants are struggling. Instead of hiding the problem, you dig deeper into the soil to see what is going wrong. Maybe it's a lack of nutrients, Maybe the plant needs more sunlight. By identifying the issue or the root cause, you, the gardener, can make the changes and help your plants grow. That's how I view my emotions now. They are not something to hide. They are signals to help me heal and become stronger. So I invite you to take a look at your flaws and or what you perceive as your weaknesses and ask yourself, How can you look at them from another perspective and transform them into your greatest strength today? Lesson number five. 
the most dangerous addition in the world is comfort. Comfort is the world's addition and a cheap ticket to depression. Okay, let's dive into something that hits home for a lot of us. I know this all too well because there are times when I find myself feeling lazy, and you know those days when all you want to do is curl up on the couch and binge watch Netflix. Well, yeah, I have been there, and let me tell you, the next day I often notice that my energy is so low, and instead of feeling rejuvenated, I find myself stuck in this cycle of wanting to go back to that comfort. Accept it or not, it's an addiction. Sitting on the couch. Watching another episode and just not wanting to do anything productive. Yeah, you might feel good in the moment, but the next day you are left with that familiar sense of guilt or dissatisfaction. You just feel heavier, both mentally and physically. And honestly, it's not just about TV or Netflix. It can be anything that feels comfortable but doesn't serve us. Scrolling endlessly on social media, TikTok, procrastinating on important tasks. Or even just sitting in a job that doesn't fulfill you but feels comfortable because you know you are still getting paid at the end of the day just by sitting at the desk doing nothing, and maybe also you are too scared to try out that new workout class, so maybe you hesitate to speak out in a meeting or ask someone out. Ask yourself, when was the last time you stepped outside your comfort zone? What did you do, and how did it make you feel? And I just want to say that stepping outside your comfort zone doesn't have to be this big scary step. It doesn't mean you know quitting your job and starting a business right away. It starts with small minor changes every day, like going for a walk when you feel like staying in, listening to a podcast instead of scrolling on TikTok, or grab a book that challenges your thinking instead of reaching for your phone. Just remember, nothing grows in comfort zones, and. Every small step away from comfort every day will slowly train your mind and your body to embrace growth and discomfort. So you will start building momentum, and before you know it, those little changes become bigger shifts. You will find yourself more open to new experiences, taking more risk, and realizing just how capable you truly are. Because it's these daily small actions that will ultimately transform your life for the better. Hey, if you have been thinking about starting a podcast, but maybe you haven't taken the leap yet, well, consider this is your sign because it's my birthday and I'm offering ten percent off my thirty day podcast launch bootcamp, where I help you launch, market, and monetize your own podcast in just thirty days. People love this bootcamp, and you can see why when you visit masterclass. joanchan. com forward slash bootcamp, or you can find the link in the show notes below and use promo code. Buff their tent at checkout to get your ten percent off. This one-time promo code is available only for this month and ends on October thirty-first. So don't wait until next year or the next opportunity. You have the chance right now to make your podcast dreams a reality. So let's make it happen together. Go to masterclass. joanchan. com forward slash bookcamp or visit the show notes below for more information. And I hope to see you inside. Now let's get back to the show. Lesson number six: Life doesn't get easier; you just get stronger. You always have problems, have some sort of conflict going on in your life. You must learn to enjoy life while still solving them. You can either cry in the storm or dance in the rain. Growing up, I had this motto in life: Life is hard. And it wasn't just a passing thought; it was my belief. It was something that I genuinely believe. Because I figured, I figured if I expected life to be hard, I wouldn't be disappointed, right? But here's the thing: I realized over time that it wasn't just about life being hard; it was about how I responded to those hard moments. There was a period when everything felt like it was falling apart. My business was hitting roadblocks. I wanted to give up because honestly, in those moments, it felt like the world was working against me. And of course, the old motto "life is hard" played on repeat in my head, and I kept waiting for things to magically improve, for life to give me a break, but it just never did. But here is the cool part: in the process, I was getting stronger. 
And I realized life is kind of like a video game. You know, you start at level one, right? And you have to kill some monsters, you have to jump over a few bridges, maybe fall into a fire or a trap or two, but you keep going or you keep running. Then boom, you are up against a big boss. And once you defeat the big boss, what happens? You get to level up. And at the next level, what happens? You are bigger, you are stronger, you get more tools, more weapons to face even bigger monsters. And that's what life is. Every problem, every challenge is like a monster you have to beat. You can't skip over it, you can't cheat your way through, but once you face it, you level up. You get stronger, smarter, you get more resources to face whatever's next. Life doesn't give you an easy mode, but it does give you the chance to grow with each new level. And I remember sharing this analogy at one of my talks when I speak in front of all entrepreneurs and it clicked. And for me, it clicked when I stopped waiting for life to be easy and instead I focus on becoming stronger. So remember, you don't need the problems to disappear. The monsters, they won't go away. But neither will the strength you build from facing them. So instead of going through them, you grow through them. So whenever you feel like life is tough, remember you are leveling up. You are gaining new tools, new skills, new strength every single time. You are stronger than you think. And the storm, well, it's just part of the game. So let's keep playing. Lesson number seven. Avoid two traps. Caring about what they think and thinking that they care. There are two major traps in life. One is caring too much about what other people think and the other is thinking that they actually care as much as you think they do. I used to spend so much time worrying about other people's opinions. What would they think if I do this? Well, if I say that, it was exhausting. But most people are way too busy thinking about themselves to really care that much about what you are doing or saying. So take a moment and really think about it. How many times have you been worried about what someone else thinks of you only to realize later that they probably didn't even give it a second thought? Because we overestimate how much people are focused on us because we are the main character in our own story. But in everyone else's story, they are the main character. They are just as wrapped up in their own lives as you are in yours. We spend so much energy trying to please or impress others, but in the end, we realize that people are often just thinking about themselves. Just like we do, too. So let me give you an example. When it comes to posting content online, sometimes I still hesitate. I worry, what if they think I'm being too bold? What if people don't like it? And you know what? When I finally posted it, not only did people not judge the way I feared, but many didn't even notice, right? And the ones who did actually appreciated my bonus. So I learned, stop caring so much about what people think, not because their opinions don't matter, but because most of the time they are not thinking about you at all. And even if they are, it doesn't matter. And I'm not saying don't care at all. That's not what I mean. Of course, it's natural to seek validation, especially from people we love and care about. But, you know, it's about having the self-awareness. When you base your life decisions on the opinions of people who are not living your life, then you are not really living your life. And that's when you fall into a trap. So how do you avoid these two traps? You live your life for you. You make choices based on what is right for you, what is best for you, what lights you up, and what moves you forward. Let them think or say what they want, because here is the truth. Here is the truth. You can never fully control what someone else thinks about you, but you can't control, you have 100% control how you think about yourself. And that is what matters. Because what matters is what you think of you. Because how you see yourself is everything. Lesson number eight. To be successful at anything, you don't have to be special. You simply have to be what most people are not. Consistent, determined, 
and willing to work for it. Let's talk about podcasting for a moment. You know, it's a medium that has exploded in popularity. And many people started podcasts and they quit after three episodes. And you might think that to succeed in it, you need to have a podcasting voice or a background in radio or broadcasting. But I'm here to tell you that I don't think I have a podcasting voice and I did not have a background in radio or broadcasting. So I'm not special and I didn't have any prior podcasting skills when I started. What I did have was a determination and an unwavering commitment to show up week after week and weeks turn into months and months turn into years. Yes, I have been producing this show and sharing my journey with you for over three years now and I'm really proud of myself and because this commitment has allowed me to learn, to grow and evolve in ways that I have never imagined and I hope it's the same for you too. So let's reflect on your own journey. What do you want to create success in? Whether it's fitness, a passion project, a learning a new skill, or a podcast, or start a side hustle. The key lies in your approach, mindset, and attitude. Are you determined to keep pushing forward when things get tough? Are you consistently putting in the effort? Are you willing to do the work even when it feels tedious or uninspiring? You know, I've interviewed so many successful entrepreneurs and success often comes down to one simple truth. It's about persistence. It's about showing up even when you don't feel like it. So remember, don't be the average podcaster who quit after three episodes. In order to succeed at anything, again, you don't have to be special. You don't have to be perfect. You simply have to be what most people are not, which is consistent, determined, and willing to work for it. Lesson number nine. Surround yourself with people who push you to be better. No drama, no jealousy, no mess, just good vibes and positive energy for all. Let me tell you about a time when I learned this lesson the hardest way. When I worked at one of my old jobs, things got really dramatic with my co-workers. The environment was toxic, filled with drama, jealousy and gossip. I was doing well in my role and because... Of that, because of my performance, I got a lot more opportunities than some of my co-workers. Instead of support, what I faced was resentment and jealousy. And the tension became so intense and you know, I was still young, still in my early 20s, and I didn't have the tools or self-awareness that I have today to deal with the situation in a positive way. It was draining to be in a negative environment like that, and the negativity got to a point where I knew I had to make a choice, stay, or walk away. So, I quit a job. And a few years ago, I when I embarked on entrepreneurship, this not only changed my career path and lifestyle, but it also taught me this one powerful and important lesson that I am sharing with you guys, is that your inner circle matters. They say you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I always believe that to be true. And now when I look at my inner circle today, they are all entrepreneurs like me. You know, people who are driven, positive, and always striving to be better. And these are the people who push me to level up, not because of competition or jealousy, but because we are we all genuinely want to see each other win and succeed. You know, these are the people, my friends, who inspire me and challenge me and celebrate my wins. There's no room for jealousy or drama because we just we are just too busy for drama. We simply don't have time for drama. So when you surround yourself with people who focus on growth, solutions, and building a better future, your life transforms. Your mindset shifts, your finances improve, and you start investing your time more wisely. You start making better decisions, and you will begin to prioritize what truly matters and achieve the goals you have set for yourself. It's not just about who you are around, you know, who you hang out. It's about how their influence elevates every area of your life. So take a moment and ask yourself now, who are the five people you spend the most time with? Are they pushing you to be better? Are they inspiring you to grow? Are they encouraging you to be your best self? Or are they bringing drama and negativity into your life? 
Because trust me, the people you surround yourself with can either elevate your life or drag it down. So choose wisely. Lesson number 10. Most important rule. Never downgrade your dreams to match your reality. Instead, upgrade your beliefs to match your vision. Lastly, let's dive into one of the most powerful truths and lessons when it comes to success and manifestation. Your beliefs shape your reality. What you believe, you attract. And it all starts with a single thought. And let me explain. This framework is what I use to teach and coach my clients. The thoughts that you allow into your mind turn into emotions and your emotions drive your action and your actions ultimately lead to the results you see in your life, right? It's just as simple as that. But here's a problem many people face. They look around at their current reality and let it detect their beliefs. They see limitations, they see obstacles and setbacks. And they begin to string their dreams to fit what they see in the present moment. They settle, they stop dreaming big because their current reality tells them it's impossible. But your current reality doesn't define your future. What matters most is your vision for where you want to go and most importantly, the beliefs you hold about your ability to get there. If you want to manifest your dreams and make them a reality, you have to stop believing what you see in front of you and start believing in what you want to see. If you can hold it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. I want you to imagine you are planting a seed in the soil. Now, when you first plant a seed, you don't immediately see a tree, do you? You can't see what is happening beneath the soil. But you trust that with time, nurturing and care, the seed will grow into a tree. Even though you can't see it yet, you believe in its potential. And that is how your vision works. Even when you don't see the full picture yet, even you don't know how to get there, you have to keep believing in it. And you have to keep nurturing your beliefs. Because it's a seed that you planted. And that is what will eventually bring your vision to life. Trust me. Again, let me share my story that ties into this. Right? I had just quit my job to pursue my entrepreneurial dreams. And honestly, reality was rough. I didn't have the financial security or the validation from others. No one in my family is an entrepreneur. I am the first one and the only one. So it would have been easy to downgrade my vision, to play small and settle for something more realistic. But instead of shrinking my dreams, I chose to expand my beliefs. I started the whole vision of success in my mind, even when there was no evidence of it in my reality. But every single day, I reminded myself of what I wanted, not what I currently had. Slowly, the opportunity started aligning with my vision. I started drawing people in, and my beliefs were manifesting into reality because I was consistently holding the belief and the vision of where I wanted to go. And that is the power of belief. So ask yourself, are you downgrading your dreams because of what you see around you? Or are you ready to upgrade your beliefs to match your vision? Start with a thought. Start with an empowering belief. If you don't have them, borrow these beliefs from others. Borrow from people who have achieved what you want to achieve, who are living the life that you want to live, and use their results and use their reality and fill those thoughts with emotions. Then use those emotions to drive your actions and allowing the action to manifest the results you desire. Just like you are listening to this podcast episode today, what am I actually doing? I am actually sharing my most powerful beliefs with you. So borrow my beliefs and these are the 10 beliefs you can borrow today. So this brings us to the end of today's episode, a very special birthday present for me and a gift to you just to thank you for sticking around and I hope you find it valuable and let me know which one of these is your favorite lesson that you will never forget. You can leave your answer in the comment box below if you are listening to this on Spotify or you can reach out to me directly 
and you know where to find me. It was such a joy to be sharing this journey and these lessons with you. And thank you, thank you so much for all your birthday wishes. I will keep on shining and bringing more extraordinary guests and creating awesome content for you just like this one. And we will be back next week with another amazing episode. Until then, keep choosing joy and living your best life. Thank you again for tuning into Find Joy Joanne podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, take a screenshot and share it on your IG story and take Find Joy Joanne underscore podcast so I know you are listening. And leave us a positive review on Apple Podcasts if you haven't already done so. And remember to hit the subscribe button whether you are listening on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music or any of your other favorite platforms. If you love what we are doing and want to become one of our sponsors, you can send me a DM to connect. And thanks for being here. I will see you soon in the next episode.